Okay, thank you. So this is the demo class on DevOps with AWS, and I am the trainer. My name is Ashay Gayas, and I have around 10 years of IT experience, uh, and I am doing the trainings from last four years. So for recently, I got certifications from CKAD, uh, AZ104, and uh, AWS Solution Architect. These are my recent certifications. And coming to today's agenda, so today we are going to discuss about the course contents. So the training will be around two months. OK, so uh, you will get around 45 to 50 classes. So what are the tools we are going to cover uh, in our course? So we will discuss the about uh, course contents and we will have some uh, brief introduction about the SDLC and why we need DevOps in the SDLC and some interaction about the cloud computing. So this is the today's agenda. And uh, so here, so once you are doing the course from us, uh, you will get uh, assignments at the end of every tool. So we are going to cover around seven tools. OK, so at the end of every tool, you will get uh, assignments and at the end of every tool, you will have mock interviews. We will conduct mock interviews from real time experts. OK. And finally, once you completed the course, uh, you will have final mock interview also, which will help for your uh, job hunting. And we will have some uh, resume preparation classes also. Okay, this is the support from us. And apart from this, up to the getting the job, so we will be with you. So we will guide you how to attend the interviews. And if you need any job support, we will provide job support also. Okay, so this is the support from us. And coming to the contents here. So as a DevOps engineer, the prerequisite, the only prerequisite for a DevOps engineer is uh, the Linux. OK, so you must have basics on Linux. So this is the prerequisite. So by considering this, uh, by considering the people from non IT background also, so what we are doing is uh, we are going to uh, start from very basic uh, for every tool. So we have around seven tools, right? In every tool, we will start from the basics. So before starting the DevOps tools, we are going to start with the Linux because uh, Linux is the prerequisite. So most of the cases we are going to work on Linux platform only. So for that reason, so we will start our course with uh, Linux basics. Okay. And once Linux basics completed, so Linux basics means we are not going to cover complete Linux. Complete Linux is our, again a separate uh, course. So we need only basics like uh, uh, how can we create a files folders uh, and how can we um, delete the files folders? How can we copy the files? Basic operations, whatever the basic operations we are doing on Windows platform. OK. So like that basic operations we need so as a DevOps engineer. That basics are enough. Yeah, Ashan Mugam, I think you are trying to ask something. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Yes. Uh, will you provide any course materials for this course? Yeah, yeah. So for every tool uh, we'll provide, at the end of the tool, we'll provide the course material. Materials. Yes, so, yes. so we'll will provide a recording record. and a course material both. So these recordings will be available for us always. OK, yes. Lifetime will we have any access. time frame, something like that? No, no, no. Lifetime access. Lifetime access. Yes. OK, will it have any projects or only assignments? Uh, no, so actually what we are going to teach is uh, we'll take one code. So on, uh, means uh, one project, OK? So with on top of that project only, we are going to cover every tool. In addition to that, we will provide one more code that is one more project for your practice. OK. OK, thank you. So here uh, the Linux basics uh, are enough for us, so it will take around five to six classes. OK, in five to six classes, uh, we will cover all the basics, the required basics from the Linux. OK, and once we completed Linux, then we are going to start our DevOps tools. So here uh, we'll, we have the different DevOps tools like Git, 
Jenkins. So these are the tools we are going to cover in our course, Docker. Kubernetes. Ansible. And we will start with uh, Amazon Web Services Cloud. And after the cloud, we are going to cover with uh, Terraform because uh, there is some dependency between cloud and Terraform. Without cloud, we cannot uh, learn Terraform. That's why once cloud is computed, uh, completed, we are going to start with the Terraform. So these are the tools uh, we are going to learn from DevOps point of view. OK, so here why we are learning these tools means. If anyone is having any doubts here. So if you have any doubts, you can ask in between no issues. <coughs> so uh, here why we are learning these tools is. Uh, what is as a DevOps engineer, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to have different teams in any organization. We are going to collaborate in between these organizations. That is the main work of a DevOps engineer. OK, so we will have the different teams like a dev team. OK, and we will have testing team. That is a QA team will be available and ops team will be available. OK. So in between these team teams, we are going to collaborate these teams. OK, so while collaborating these teams, we are going to use uh, different uh, tools uh, like these are the tools we are going to use. OK, now what is the purpose of dev team? What the dev team will do? So dev team is going to develop the code. So we are not going to develop any code. We are going to get the code from the development team. Okay, from the development team, we will get the code. What code the development team is going to write? Development team is going to develop the code for our application, means for our project. So, actually, what is a project? Project is uh, nothing but development and maintenance of an application. Okay, so uh, we will have, uh, so for example, we will have different types of applications uh, like uh, IRCTC and uh, e-commerce websites like amazon whatever the application so uh, behind these applications okay some development team will be available they are going to write the code and they are going to enhance the code enhance the, the, uh, depending on the requirement they are going to enhance the code also so we are not going to involve in writing the code only development team is going to write the code okay so while uh, working with the development team okay so we have different types of uh, sdlc models okay and uh, let us consider the agile methodology so we will discuss uh, what are the different sdlc models we have in the regular classes okay as of now i'm considering the agile methodology as one of the sdlc model so in the agile sdlc model what is going to happen is this development team is going to work on sprint basis okay so they will work on the sprint model so what is the sprint means sprint is nothing but one sprint equal to one sprint will be around uh, 10 working days most of the cases it depends on the organization okay so mostly i am considering the 10 days okay for every 10 days uh, we will have one sprint at the end of one sprint our development team is going to uh, release the code okay so for the first sprint we will have version one similarly on the second sprint on the second sprint we will have version two so like that on every sprint we will have different versions of the code from the development team okay now we have to keep all these versions of the code so the development team what the development team will do they will develop the code they will release the code okay they will uh, develop the code on the end of uh, at the end of every sprint they will release the code now maintenance of this code is not the headache of uh, development team 
they will just uh, develop the code, they will release the code. Okay. Now the maintenance of the code will be taken care by us. DevOps team is going to take care of maintenance of the code. So to maintain, to retain all these versions of the code, we are going to use different version control systems. We have different version control systems. Okay. So uh, in short, we are calling as VCS. So one of the version control system is Git. Okay. So Git is a, uh, nowadays Git is a very popular version control system. By using this Git, we can maintain the different versions of the code from the different development teams. So we are going to use Git to retain the different versions of the code from the developers. So developers will develop the code. Maintenance of the code will be taken care by us. So what maintenance we are going to take care? So here uh, we will have different environments. So uh, in uh, every environment, we are going to maintain a different version control system, uh, different repository, Git repository, and uh, we will have different branches uh, with this version control systems. Maintenance of the branches uh, will be taken care by us. Like that, uh, different works we are going to do on the version control systems that part in that part devops people come into action so for that reason we are going to learn git okay git is one of the popular version control system by using this git we are going to maintain the different versions of the code from the different developers so we will have different development teams these development teams will work on different branches like a feature branches and sometimes we need hot fix branches to fix the protection issues. So all these things will be taken care by us. DevOps people are going to take care of uh, everything. So for that reason, it is necessary to learn Git as a DevOps engineer. Okay. So Git is the first tool you are going to start in the DevOps point of view. So in the Git, what we are going to learn is, so we are going to learn uh, how to create uh, the git repository and how to create the branches okay creation of the branches and merging of the branches and if you got any merge conflicts okay how to resolve the merge conflicts so like that the different concepts are there so what are the concepts we need we'll start from the basics and we'll uh, discuss the advanced topics like um, um, cherry picking okay Cherry picking and it rebasing. So all these uh, concepts we are going to uh, learn in the Git. So means in our version control system, we will have our source code. Okay, the source code will be available in the version control system. So uh, we are we are not going to write any source code our developers will provide the required source code. We are going to maintain this source code. Okay. Once we have the source code, once we have the source code ready, okay, then we have to work on to the code. We have to build the code. Okay. So code building will be taken care by DevOps people only. Only dev team will develop the code Okay, dev team will develop the code. Once the code is ready, then DevOps people come into action and uh, deploy that is uh, building the code will be taken care by the DevOps people only. Okay, to, pe to perform the build operations, we are going to take us um, the help of uh, some tools we are calling as a CI CD tools. With the help of CI CD tools, we will perform build operations okay so we have different types of ci cd tools like jenkins team city bamboo like that we have different tools out of these jenkins is very popular so nowadays 90 percent of organizations are using jenkins as a ci cd tool because it has many advantages like uh, it is an open source and it has good community support and it has it is rich in plugins so like that we have many advantages with the jenkins so in our course once we completed git we are going to learn jenkins why we are learning the jenkins means so we have code ready okay 
in our uh, version control system, we have code ready. Once the code is available, we have to work onto the code. To work onto the code, we are going to use the uh, Jenkins, the CI/CD tool, and we are going to work on the Java project, and we will learn about the build automation tool like Maven also. Maven is a build automation tool we are going to use to build the Java projects. OK, and here uh, we are going to uh, we will perform the build operations like uh, we are going to build the code and we are going to validate the test cases and we are going to do the static code analysis. OK, mm, so by doing the static code analysis again, we will take uh, the help of one more tool that is a sonar cube. We are going to discuss about sonar cube also. So, so what is this sonar cube means? This sonar cube is the uh, the uh, to perform the static code analysis. We are going to use sonar cube. Okay, so we'll do the co code quality. To do the code quality, quality checks. Uh, we are going to use sonar cube. So these operations. Once uh, everything is fine, we are going to package the code. So these are the different operations involved in build phase. OK, we'll compile the code. We add the test cases, do the static code analysis and everything is fine. We are going to do the packaging. So to perform these operations. We are going to use a Jenkins as a CICD tool and this Jenkins will take the help of other tools like Maven and sonar cube okay so uh, so these are the build phase okay this is the build phase under build phase we are going to get artifacts we will get artifacts so these artifacts we need to deploy our project okay so to deploy our project into deployment servers, we need artifacts. So from where we are getting these artifacts? From the CI CD tool. OK, so we will use our source code with the help of the source code. OK, we are going to get the artifacts. Once we uh, once the artifacts are available, we are going to deploy our artifacts into other deployment servers. OK, so we will have deployment servers so environment wise. So in any software organization, we will have different environments like dev environment, QA environment, uh, EAT, prod. So like that, different environments will be available. So uh, on every environment, we will have a separate deployment servers. We will deploy our artifacts on the deployment servers. Once we deploy the artifacts, our project will come into live. So once the code is available, in our version control system. Next DevOps, uh, next every operation will be taken care by the DevOps people only. OK, so all these operations will be taken care by the DevOps people only. OK, uh, so getting uh, once we have the artifacts, then we are going to deploy our artifacts by using the different ways. We have different ways to deploy the artifacts. Yes, Shanmugam. I think I have a small question here. Yes, yes. So you are saying that after learning the Git, we will be yes. covering. You will be covering Jenkins, Maven, like these tools. Yes, yes. But we need servers for this, and do we need to learn AWS before this? Uh, no. So here, what we'll do is uh, just uh, we'll have. That is, we are going to create account in AWS to create the virtual server. OK, we'll take one virtual server. Uh, that part we will cover for uh, 30 minutes. How can we create a virtual server? How can we connect it to virtual server? So that we will cover uh, before Linux itself, because the Linux practice also we are going to do on virtual server only. We'll take virtual server from Amazon Web Services, and we are not going to install Linux in our local machines. Everything we'll do on virtual servers only. From where we are getting these virtual services from Amazon Web Services from AWS. 
Okay, so we will have uh, that uh, detection also for 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, we will uh, cover how can we create uh, virtual servers, how to connect the virtual servers. All these things we will discuss in the regular classes. Okay. So uh, all the, every tool, not only Linux, uh, whether it is a Git or uh, Maven, Sonar Cube, Docker Cube, when it is Ansible, everything we are going to install on virtual servers only. We are not going to install anything on our uh, local machines. Okay. And uh, one more thing, no need to pay anything to AWS for one year. For one year, we'll get uh, all these things at free of cost. So we'll discuss in the regular classes how how can we perform all these operations. Now uh, here once we have the artifacts, okay. So these artifacts we are going to deploy into the different deployment servers, okay. So while performing the deployment, okay, while performing the deployment, we are going to follow two ways, okay. So we can, so here we have artifacts, right? We have artifacts. These artifacts will be, we can deploy in the two ways. In three ways, we can deploy our artifacts. So what are the two ways is, we can directly deploy the artifacts. So artifacts, we can directly deploy artifacts directly. That is one way. Okay, another way is instead of deploying the artifacts directly, we are going to get the images. We are going to get the images for our artifacts uh, and these images will be deployed. So these are the uh, two ways for the deployment. Okay, if we are deploying artifacts directly, then no need to learn Docker and Kubernetes. No need to learn Docker and Kubernetes because we have artifacts. We can deploy our artifacts directly into our deployment servers. Okay. If we want to deploy images, I don't want to deploy artifacts directly. I I want to deploy images. Then we need to learn Docker and Kubernetes because so these images are nothing but Docker images. Okay, so how we are getting these Docker images? So these Docker images we will get from the artifacts. Okay, so what are the artifacts we got from the CI CD tool? From that artifacts, we will get the Docker images. These Docker images will deploy. Now, uh, if it is possible to deploy artifacts directly, why we are learning Docker and Kubernetes? Why we are going for uh, deploying the images? Because we have many advantages with the Docker image deployment, image deployments compared to artifacts. Okay, so what are the advantages we have is, so let us consider one example. So, so we know we'll have different environments in any organization like dev, UA and UAT prod. Okay, so in these environments, we'll have deployment servers environment wise. In dev environment, dev development team will be available. Development team will develop the code. Okay, and as the development team is developing the code, they know the requ requirements, configuration requirements for the code to run successfully okay now let us consider to run our application without any issues we need a java 8 okay so that information development team will know because they are going to develop the code right they will know everything what are the configuration requirements they need everything they they need they, they know okay and they will maintain the Java 8 in their develop deployment servers and they will test the code. Okay, code will be deployed successfully. Code will run successfully because they will uh, maintain the required configuration changes. 
once the code is success in dev environment so they will get the sign off from the dev lead okay and once they got the sign off the code will be moved to the next environment qa environment in qa environment testing people will be there okay and our qa members don't know what is the prerequisite okay here the pre prerequisite we consider is java 8 but in qa deployment servers we have java 7 let us consider okay the same code so there is no change in the source code there is a change in the configuration okay environment configuration in the deployment servers they are using qa deployment servers they are using java 7 so definitely code is going to fail because uh, the environment con there is a change in the environment configuration there is no change in the source code even though there is no change in the source code our uh, code is going to fail so again they have to dig the reasons for failure of the code they will send the notifications to the development team code is not working as per the requirement again development team has to investigate so uh, these things will happen okay finally they have to find there is a environment configuration change we we need java it all these things so it will uh, it will be delayed our production so if this is the case what will happen production will be delayed okay so if the production is delayed it is going to uh, finally it is going to affect the business okay so this will happen when we are directly deploying the artifacts okay if we are going with the artifact deployment these are the headaches we are going to face okay so for that reason instead of deploying artifacts directly if we deploy images that is the docker images okay so what will happen is so these images doesn't depend on environment configurations irrespective of the environment configurations the images will work in any environment okay so that is the advantage with images so how we are going to get the images means from the artifacts itself we are going to get the images this image again will consist of the source code and the required environment configurations everything packaged in a single image okay in image is nothing but a single package where uh, we'll have application code requ required binaries dependencies other requ uh, requirements whatever we need for our application to run seamlessly everything will be bundled into a single package we are calling as a image okay so to get the image we have to use docker with the help of docker what we can do is we are going to convert our images uh, our artifacts into docker images once we have docker images if we consider the same example what will happen is here irrespective of the environment configuration once our image works without any issues in one environment no need to bother about uh, the environment configuration changes the same image will work in any environment without any issues okay because the required java it we are going to embed in the image itself okay the uh, application will take the required uh, configuration changes from the image itself that is the reason why no need to bother about the environment configuration changes so uh, this will uh, increase the speed of production okay our production is not going to be delayed in time we can deploy our code we can deploy our code uh, into production in time without any delays so like that we have many advantages with the images docker images deploying the images compared to deploy, artifact deployment image deployment has many advantages so due to these advantages nowadays most of the organizations are uh, trying to implement these uh, containerization technologies like docker and kubernetes so that is the reason why we are going to learn docker and kubernetes okay so what this docker will do docker will create the images from the artifacts 
we are getting the artifacts from the CLCD too. Okay, so these artifacts we are going to convert into images with the help of Docker. Okay, so in Docker also we'll start from the basics and we are going to learn the advanced topics like how can we create the images, how to create the containers. Okay, and and I will learn about the Docker networking concepts, Docker networks and Docker volumes. And uh, Docker, uh, that is uh, Docker Swarm. OK, so uh, like that uh, we are going to learn all the advanced topics also from the um, Docker. So with the help of Docker, we'll create the images and uh, Kubernetes is uh, this Docker is a containerization tool. Okay, with the help of Docker, we can create the containers. From the images, we'll create the containers, and uh, inside the containers, our application will be available. And what is the Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is a container orchestration tool. Okay, Docker is a containerization tool. Okay, Kubernetes is a container orchestration tool. So if we have hundreds of containers, okay, all these containers will be maintained by the Kubernetes. Okay, with the help of this uh, container orchestration tool, we can achieve high availability for our application, which is uh, somewhat difficult with the containerization tools. Okay, for high availability, we are going to implement container orchestration. Okay, so Kubernetes is one of the popular uh, container orchestration tools. Okay, so here in the Kubernetes also we will start from the basics and we will create a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so with the help of uh, three nodes, okay, on top of three nodes, so we will create a Kubernetes cluster and on the Kubernetes cluster, so we will uh, deploy uh, different uh, objects like uh, we are going to create uh, parts and we are going to uh, create uh, that is a uh, deployment that is a uh, uh, we have deployment objects and uh, replication controllers and uh, we will create a uh, replica sets and we will create a daemon sets okay so we will create a daemon sets like that these are the different objects we are going to create on top of our kubernetes cluster and uh, we'll uh, learn the most advanced topics like uh, config maps and uh, Kubernetes volumes, Kubernetes volumes. And uh, I will learn about the Kubernetes uh, networking also. OK. And health is how can we perform the health is uh, in the Kubernetes that is the probes. We'll learn about the probes and how uh, dental part auto scaling. So like that advanced topics also we are going to learn in the Kubernetes. OK, so that is the necessity. Why we are learning Docker and Kubernetes is uh, to uh, reduce the production issues. OK, so we will learn the Docker and Kubernetes. We can implement a Docker and Kubernetes to reduce the production issues. OK, now once uh, we completed with uh, containerization tools, uh, we will cover Ansible. So this Ansible is a configuration management tool. OK. This is a configuration management tool. So to reduce the complexity of daily operations, we will use this configuration management tools. OK, so what is the necessity? Why we are going with the Ansible is uh, here, uh, let us consider we have uh, thousand servers. OK, we have thousand servers on top of these thousand servers. Uh, if we want to do any patching activity, OK, um, uh, so let us consider to upgrade one package on one server. It will take 30 minutes. I'm doing some pack uh, some patching activity. OK, so to complete this patching passing activity, for one server, okay, I have to spend uh, 30 minutes. Then for thousand servers, how much time I need? I need, I need uh, 500 hours. 
this 500 manual hours manual time i have to spend to do a simple batching activity on thousand servers okay so uh, here this is uh, we are not achieving anything here just we are doing the path patching for doing the patching itself we are spending 500 hours okay so that is uh, if that is the case instead of doing this activity manually if we go with configuration management tools suppose ansible if i am implementing ansible so what will happen is so i will have ansible controller okay so this controller will connect to thousand servers Okay, and this uh, controller will uh, run a simple script on all the thousand servers. Okay, so means within 30 minutes, within 30 minutes, this Ansible controller will do the required patching activity. You see how simplicity is. Okay, so if we do the manual operation, it is taking 500 hours. So if we go with Ansible, if we go with configuration management tools, we will complete the same activity in 30 minutes. So like that, like that activities. So if you want to perform like these activities on the remote servers, okay. So we are going to implement configuration management tools. We have different configuration management tools like Ansible, a Puppet, Chef, okay. So out of this, Ansible is the most advanced and uh, um, most popular nowadays because uh, it is easy to learn. It has many other advantages also, okay. So that is the purpose why we are learning Ansible in our course, okay. So in Ansible, we are going to learn about the Ansible modules and Ansible attack commands, Ansible playbooks. How can we write the playbooks to automate our uh, operations? If we have any repeated operations, uh, like uh, I want to start my application every day on 10 a.m. So simply, I can write one playbook. I can execute the playbook. Okay, so then uh, the operation will be repeated automatically. So no need to do manually. Okay, manual intervention is not required. We can automate the problem. So like that operations we can perform with the help of Ansible. Okay, that is the reason why we are going to learn the Ansible. Okay, so uh, once uh, we completed Ansible, then we'll go with uh, cloud computing, Amazon Web Services. Okay, so under Amazon Web Services, we are going to learn the tools like uh, EC2 and uh, EBS volumes and <clears throat> so we learn the uh, tools like uh, s3 buckets uh, vpc and uh, elastic load balancer and iam identity and access management and relational database services and uh, simple net notification service then cloud watch so like that we have many tools uh, we are going to learn all these tools so these are the tools we need as a devops engineer we are going to use these tools so as a devops engineer whatever the uh, services we are using from amazon web services uh, all services we are going to learn okay so uh, in cloud computing we will learn these uh, topics uh, manually we will create everything manually we will create our EC2 is nothing but virtual servers. So we'll create virtuals for us manually. We'll create uh, volumes manually. Okay. Uh, we'll create uh, uh, S3 buckets manually. We'll create uh, um, that is a CloudWatch. This is a monitoring tool. CloudWatch is the man monitoring tool. We'll create uh, this CloudWatch manually. All these things will do manual operations only. Okay. Uh, so once we done with uh, Amazon Web Services cloud computing. We are going to learn one the interesting tool that is uh, infrastructure as a code tool that is uh, Terraform. So what this Terraform will do is whatever the manual operation we are performing on this cloud, whatever the manual, the service, all these services we are creating manually, right? So instead of creating these services manually, we are going to write the code. To create virtual servers, I want to create virtual servers. I am going to write the code, Terraform code. Okay. I want to create a virtual private cloud, VPC. Then I, I will write some code in the Terraform. No need to do manual operations. Okay. 
So like that, uh, we can perform everything on the cloud with the help of Terraform. Okay, Terraform is a infrastructure as a code tool. So we will provision the infrastructure by writing the code. We are going to write the code to get the required infrastructure. So we will learn about the uh, Terraform once the cloud computing is uh, completed. Okay, so this is the plan. So these are the tools we are going to cover in our course. So in between this, so at the end of every tool, uh, we'll provide the assignments and uh, we'll uh, conduct mock interviews. Okay, so we'll have doubt sections. So uh, all these, uh, whatever the tools we are discussed, right? So everything uh, on every concept will be uh, like a real time concepts only. We'll take some sample code. Okay, sample project will take on top of the project only. We can perform every operation here. Okay. So that is the plan. So if you have any doubts, uh, you can ask now. Any doubts? So class timings, so these things uh, will inform through the WhatsApp, okay? Hey, sorry, I was talking on mute actually, like, uh, okay. Yeah, so you mentioned like, uh, you will be explaining about the Terraforms and uh, like how the Terraforms are working. Like, are you planning to explain Terraforms along with the uh, Git or some other? Some other like uh, versioning tool. Uh, I will use Git also. You can use Git, yes. In this course, in this particular course, like are you trying to integrate with Git or any other uh, versioning tool from there? We are no, Git only. Get... Git only. Git only. So any Git any only. is there any possibility to add Git labs? Uh, no, that is not in our uh, syllabus okay. in our course. Okay. We are using it only. Okay, okay. Makes sense. Okay, so if you have any doubts, I can communicate on WhatsApp also. So I will provide recording. This recording also go through the recording one more time. So if no doubts, we'll wind up here. Yeah, Ashan Magam, any doubts? Uh, could you please show a sample assignment? Uh, assignments we will discuss in the regular classes because uh, without uh, knowing any concept, uh, <laughs> you cannot understand, right? Mm. Once the regular class has started, uh, we will discuss. Okay. Okay, thank you.